Hey, happy Wednesday, everyone. Today, we continue with the 40 things to give up for Lent and beyond. Today, we are giving up on wholesome talk. Do you remember the Smurfs? The Smurfs had a very limited vocabulary. They smurfed all their words. They smurfed this. They smurfed that. Everything was smurftastic. Well, we humans, we've done much the same thing as the Smurfs have done, except instead of using the word smurf, we've used words of profanity. The Wolf of Wall Street, a movie that was out in movie theaters recently, set a record 500 and six times it used a certain profane word in a short 180 minutes. The scary thing is that this, given our current context, given our current reality, that this is not all that surprising. Profanity has become a common form of speech in America. As a father of young children, I, I am nervous about bringing my children to a professional sporting event because of the language that is used there. Even going to the local grocery, sco grocery store, you're not quite sure what you might hear. But before we are quick to point the finger at others around us, we must be sure to tame our own tongue. In the Ten Commandments, it says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Yet I often hear Christians say things like, Oh my God, in a very flippant way. We need to be careful about the context in which we use the name of God and that we hold his name in high regard. You, we strive to use God's name in a context of worship. And in the Old Testament, God's name was Yahweh. That's what they call, that's what God was named. And God's people so revered that name that they refused to even speak it. And so instead of using the name Yahweh, they would call him Adonai, which is translated into English as the Lord. That's why many Bible translations, our English translations, will read. When you read the text, it says the Lord in small capital letters, referring to that this is a place where the name of the Lord was given. And we do well to hold God's name in a similar way. The Bible says in James chapter 3, verse 1, With the tongue we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be. Today we strive to tame our tongues. We seek to use words to be a blessing rather than a curse. And this is about more than purity of speech. This is about how we speak towards others and also about others. Some of the forms of destructive speech that we take part in include, first of all, gossip. In Proverbs 18, verse 8, it describes gossip as delicious morsels that go down into the inner part of the body. Then there's innuendo. Innuendo is a close cousin to gossip to infer something about someone without actually using the words. Then there's flattery. Flattery is when we say something to a person's face that we would not say behind their back. There's criticism, which is a favorite among many Christians to make us feel good about ourselves. A close cousin to criticism is diminishment. This is when we trivialize, minimize another person, and find faults in them, effectively demoralizing them. Words have immense power, more than we realize. James chapter 3, verse 4 likens a tongue to a rudder in a ship. Although that rudder is small, it has the power to turn the ship in any direction. Then it also, in verse 4, it likens the tongue to a bit that is in the horse's mouth. That bit in the horse's mouth, uh, with the bit in the horse's mouth, mouth, a person, 100 pounds, can control that 600 point a pound animal. The point is, is that our words have power. As we ponder the sacrifice of Jesus this Lenten season, we realize that his name means everything. And may our lips speak words that exalt him and build others up. I leave you with Psalm 51, verse 15. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Happy Wednesday, everyone. We will see you tomorrow on Thursday.